We got new guys' carburetor back, and he's got a lot of JB Weld in this and a lot of shaping and contouring. This is going to be pretty interesting. His goal is to increase booster signal. The last time we tested this carburetor, he had it opened up, modified, and we made roughly an 80 CFM over the baseline increase. Uh, today we kind of expect the CFM might go down a little bit, but that's okay if the booster signal picks up. And check this out, it's polished. The boosters are polished. Pretty cool stuff. So here's some of the details on this thing. We have golf ball dimples. We have these ramps that go into the booster. He's also got the uh, where the air bleeds would be all covered up. So we don't really know what this will do, but we can try to predict. What do you think? I am always amazed at what we find out, what works and what doesn't work. I am going to predict that booster signal is going to come up at a given air velocity or a given air flow rate. Hmm. Uh, I'll be interested to see the impact to pressure drop required to get there though. We start by running our master to gauge what the day-to-day -day difference is. To remind everybody, this thing started off as a 600 CFM main body. And as you can see, it's in another dimension again with airflow. These are low inches as far as depression target values go. A four barrel is rated at approximately 20.4 inches of water. Our lowest previous data point in this configuration was 10 inches. One thing we noticed early on, we did some preliminary booster signal uh, uh, measurements and one one barrel seems to uh, uh, be very very strong. We started looking at the geometry of the, the epoxy and we think a little bit more can be gotten out of the barrel on the left. So here's the example of the barrel closest to your screen pulling much harder or the boosters pulling much harder than the barrel uh, furthest away from the screen. We're talking 51 versus 41 uh, inches. Now we put the spacer underneath and we're flowing all four holes. We have about a 27 CFM delta at this point. The next two data points we have nothing to compare to. And I talked about this in my last video. It's good to have more data than not enough. You'll see in the spreadsheet that these lower depression values still outflow the higher uh, target values that we have for our initial baseline. In two barrel mode we can flow at a much higher target value. We will target 20.4 on the two barrel mode because the bench will allow it. We're up roughly 14 CFM compared to the previous test. We ended up mapping the primary side all the way down to 10 inches. We rotated the spacer just like last time to get the measurements off our secondary. We did the same exact thing on the secondary side, going from 10 inches all the way up to 20.4. On a choke corn style carb, there's more room on the secondary side for contouring. It will always be a little bit better than the primary side. So in this case, we're, we're up 15 CFM, but it almost flows 40 CFM more than your primary. Not only did flow go up, booster signal went up disproportionately. A lot of times when we do these flow tests, we run at fixed depression rates. And I always wonder, is booster signal coming up just a function of airflow going up, right? Airflow through the booster, more booster signal. But in this scenario, uh, airflow's gone up, but our booster signal is at uh, nearly, we'll say, four to one ratio of depression on the carb. I feel like most of the time we've done this work, it's a two or slightly over two to one ratio of depression on the carb to booster signal. 
And so that means this has got a 2x booster signal. So last time we did testing, we uh, tested a carburetor without the choke plate and the throttle shafts and the blades reworked with some light contouring and ended at this 580 number, which was roughly at 80 CFM over our unmodified baseline Holly 600. Uh, this time, <clears throat> we've increased our booster signal by a lot, uh, roughly two times, as Josh said. Uh, and what we mean by that is we roughly um, get about double of what's pulled from underneath the carb on this style of booster. So we went from 11 being pulled from the bottom side and we measured 25.1 at the booster. And this was a strong booster. Um, roughly double that, that's two times. We ended with 56.1. Also got 28 more CFM. The other point that everyone likes to see is uh, this 20.4 mark. Our uh, bench is a, is a 600, our Superflow 600, and this carburetor out, outflows it. So we tape off a, a spacer and do our testing in two barrel form. The last time we ended at 346 on the primary. Uh, today we did 360, so we got 14 CFM and exceeded, uh, which means it was over 85 inches on the booster compared to 43 from before. Secondary flows a little bit more just because it's nicer, uh, nicer contouring. Um, we went from 383 to 398, so that's 15 uh, increase and a booster signal that is near the limit of our test equipment and it carries all the way down through all the other load points. Next, I want to show you the booster signal per, per barrel because we discovered that one of the barrels was being an all-star and the rest were kind of grouped in a similar other category. So we flowed from uh, 11 inches all the way down to eight. And uh, in each case, P for primary, S for secondary, the barrel on the throttle linkage connection side, primary, was always stronger than the rest. So in this case, we're, we're almost 10 inches stronger than the secondary, more than 10 on, the, on these two. And it carried through and trended through to the lower load points. And obviously the shape of, of the barrel is the contributing factor. Um, it could be hard con to control if you're doing it by eye, uh, but in reality, your manifold, especially if it's a single plane, is probably maybe going to even a lot of this stuff out after the carburetor. Here's some good detailed shots of the work that was done. I wanted to also say that when you remove that center dump tube from the middle of the booster on this style booster, you're increasing a lot of cross section, which I suspect is why our CFM was so positive when we thought it wouldn't be. Another thing is not to take away from the contouring. The contouring, I believe, also helps, but we weren't able to separate it from what was working or what didn't work because, um, you know, three or four things mixed together at one time uh, would be, is somewhat inconclusive. That being said, this uh, is a prototype that's non-functional the way that it is, but a lot of these ideas could be applied to uh, something and keeping them a little bit more functional and still having similar success. We ended the session plus 28 CFM and doubling our our boost uh, reference. So that is something um, hopefully people can see and, and use if they want to try to do something like this.